Hi, my name is Alyssa Mielke. I am a Canadian singer-songwriter, and um, I really miss playing live shows. Sometimes things remind me of live shows, like um, when I walk past a bar and the smell of stale beer comes out onto the street, or if I have to carry a very heavy object down flights of stairs or up flights of stairs, um, and then doing this, and uh, this is the next best thing. So thank you, School Night, for having me, and um, I'm going to play you some songs that I wrote. Cheering all out Five minutes I missed when I was 
this next song I wrote for someone who I needed to create boundaries with, but <laughs> um, anyway, sometimes you write a song for um, someone else and it turns out to be uh, for you. And this one I think was really um, for my inner critic for when she gets, you know, real um, like bossy and mean. Just tell her to back off and be like, hey, I'm trying. Anyway, this song is called Trying and um, these songs are on my new EP.
you one more song. Um, those songs were off of my new EP, and this one is a new song, because why not? Yeah. Um, thanks for listening, and I look forward to playing shows for you in real life. So beautiful. <laughs> Elisa Milke. <laughs> uh, I hope I said that right. Why don't you come in here, Elisa, and tell me if I said that correctly. How am I, how am I doing? Yeah, Milke. It's All right, like, say, your, it's say your full name for me. Elisa Milke. 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 Yeah. Milke. My, you know, my dad is a teacher and my mom is a doctor so they both like gave up and just started saying like mr milky because people couldn't pronounce it <laughs> so i'm the only person in my family who says yeah. my name milka so it's milka yeah. um yeah. i keep wanting to say mika or milk because uh it's close to a dutch name similar but uh but this is a german name yeah yeah i am um, i grew up my grandma moved in when i was born and helped raise me and she was romanian but also spoke german and so I learned German first and then learned English when I went to kindergarten in Canada. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you still speak German? Yeah. Ich kann really? Auch Deutsch sprechen. Yeah. I don't wow. get to practice much, but... I guess, uh, yeah, probably not in the far reaches of Canada. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I have German landlords right now, though, so once in a while I'll, like, you know, talk to them. And... Oh, that's funny. In Los Angeles, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I live Because you live in LA right now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, sorry? I do. Yeah, I love it. I like I didn't expect to love it. It sort of tricked me. I came one February and I had moved to New York and then, you know, it's really right. warm and there's ocean trees. And exactly. Space. So coming to coming to Los Angeles in February is usually a winning thing to do. Yeah. You can go swim on the beach, you know, 
And if you want to go to the snow and ski, you could do that in the same weekend. You just have to go to the yes. mountains outside of L.A. I have you know? not done that yet. I've been here four years and I haven't gone skiing, but maybe yeah. this next winter. It's one of the great things about Los Angeles. You know, you can say, well, how do I want to spend my weekend? Do I want to be skiing or do I want to go yeah, surfing totally. or do I want to go to the desert? Do I want to yeah. go to Happy and Harriet's, go to Palm Springs, get a massage? I mean, there's so many cool things. Totally. You know, for I, a weekend. Yeah. I love nature, too. And, like, because I grew up in, you know, like, Ontario, we have, like, giant lakes that, yeah. you know, feel vast. But, like, just living near the ocean, I'm, like, kind of obsessed. I've. I don't go as much as I used to, but I started like surfing like really badly, but like with a lot of enthusiasm, I go like almost every weekend and like, <laughs> I just like wander around in the wood. I just like, I'm always on the trails. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. And everyone's like, yeah, it, it's always is here. Like, but I'm, yeah. I'm like, I hope I'll always be this in love with it. I don't want to, you know, stop appreciating that. Cause I mean, I, I'm the biggest cheerleader, you know, and I've been yeah. here for a long time. But... Yeah. So, you know, when I think about where you came from, like uh, the far reaches of Ontario, I have this, I don't know, I have this romantic picture in my mind of like the forested regions of Ontario. Um, you know what comes to mind? Do you know the movie Summerland? Mm -hmm. Or Midsummer, uh, Midsummer? Oh, yeah. I was like Summerland. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Mids Midsummer. You know what I'm talking about? The Swedish yes. film? That does, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, kind of creepy but <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah I mean I don't think we like wore outfits that were quite that like good or excited but I did make a lot of like flower crowns out of like weeds and then got like rashes on my forehead you know okay. but like very beautiful at the moment I'm not far off um, but I yeah I spent a lot of my childhood um like we you know we didn't have we didn't watch movies or you know tv and stuff and and at the time it was terrible to not have that and now I'm so grateful for it um my dad gave me this little like tape recorder and I have like a hundred tapes on my wall still at home um, of just me singing and like, you know, writing little songs in the tape recorder. And I, I actually, I would send them to radio stations um, when I was 12 in like little packages with my school picture. Cause I thought that's how you got on the radio. So, I, <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of foresty childhood in general. I love, <laughs> I love hearing that. Yeah. I, I heard that you had written a song in fifth grade in math class. Oh, yeah. I, think I saw that uh, somewhere. Tell us about that. Um, well, I, I, I didn't really, I don't think I, my dad played music. Like he um, always sang and, and played guitar and made up songs around the house. But I think because I didn't really, um, it just like we, we didn't listen to music. We had like um, opera and I played classical music, but there wasn't, like we didn't have the radio on. Like I didn't know about Bob Dylan. I didn't know about Joni Mitchell. I didn't know about Neil Young. And so I just started writing songs and not really knowing what it was. And um, and then when I was like 13 or so, I got a, two fake managers, which were both me with a uh, an accent. And then I started booking shows that way. Like I'd bring my keyboard, I'd take the train to Toronto and like play shows there. Um, and so I, that song, you know, was one of the first ones I started, um, <laughs> that I started, you know, playing with. Um, but uh, when, then when I played at a coffee house, my best friend, at school, Michael Hahn burned me a CD and it had like Heart and had Joni Mitchell. I think it had Bonnie Raitt. Like it was, it was like very good music for like a middle school kid to give his best friend. And he was like, you're a songwriter, like listen to this. And I remember just wow. being so, conf I was like, oh, this is a, this thing I need to do is a, a thing people do, you know, it's connected to some cultural thing. So anyway. That's, that's incredible. Awesome. I mean, I, 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 it's hard for me to imagine kind of coming up in an environment where you're not being exposed to contemporary music and pop music, but you grew up in a pretty religious environment, as as I understand. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I went to public school. So, you know, at school, we'd like listen to the Beatles while we were like doing our volleyball drills and stuff like that. And, you know, certain things snuck in. Like, I think my dad one time was like listening to Willie Nelson or something. And he was like, yeah, this, this is good stuff. You know, like there's sort of um uh things that snuck in um but yeah and like lots of music though I think like I grew up singing in in church and there were always you know you had the sheet music with all the four harmonies and and a lot of my songs now that I'm tracking because I'm also working on an album for after the CP and there's yeah. a lot of choral elements so I just think I'm figuring out after you push against your childhood and are like now I'm doing my own thing there's a point at which you kind of like get to 
to realize what pieces of your story are special and you want to keep. And I really value like the musical upbringing I had, even though it was, you know, maybe not as conventional or something. Well, no, you bring your own set of experiences to it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got somebody in the chat, LCH Lichenbro, I'm not sure how to say. Uh, what part of Ontario they're asking? Um, near, I went to high school in a little town called Dundas, Ontario, which is actually, they film a lot of American movies there because it looks like the quintessential, I think they moved, they filmed part of It there or something. Um, um, giant Little Ones, did they shoot Giant Little Ones there? Do you know this movie? I don't think so. I want to say they did because I worked on this movie. That's why I'm asking. Oh, cool. And it was somewhere up there. I know. Cool. Um, I Googled you today and I saw that. I, did you re-involve the music for American Beauty? Is that American thing? Beauty, yeah, on the Shrek I'm films. Glad it's, and oh, that's good. Yeah, Shrek is a great soundtrack. <laughs> I just, I love the soundtrack in that film. So I was like, that is really cool. Oh, fantastic. Well, Giant Little Ones is actually quite good too. But I think cool. it was shot up and around that. It sounds like the right town. Um, yeah, cool. Cool little Subliminal. town. It's very cool now. When I grew up there, it was like a strip mall and a McDonald's, and now it's like <laughs> got a brewery and like, you know, exposed brick lofts and stuff. <laughs> well, I do want to point out that you've got this EP that's coming. It's coming June 11th on Mom and Pop Records, and it's called Finally, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> which is a, a great title <laughs> because I saw a headline that said, uh, Alyssa Milka, Milk, Milk. God. Milka, Milka, sorry. God. This is going to be a problem, isn't it? Oh, Alyssa no. Milka. Um, Alyssa Milka announces new EP, finally, yeah. you know, was the yeah. headline. Yeah. So. I've been making music for a long time and had lots of situations where it's like, going to be this major label thing when I was 18. And like lots of things falling apart, lots of things I needed to walk away from, lots of sketchy situations. And then finally, you're just like, I'm just going to start putting music out because, you know, might as well just do that <laughs> as so you I'm, should yeah. absolutely um so how does trombone figure into your life well i i play i chose wanted to choose the sexiest instrument that would make me super <laughs> popular at school uh so i you know played in a swing jazz band and played trombone and uh i played accordion and an organ uh, a bunch of you know all the coolest instruments um and but I actually, trombone is really cool because sometimes when you put it through um, like filters now when I'm, I'm kind of studying production and I'm playing with things and you can make it, it makes a really cool bass line, you know, you can layer things. It can be That's quite beautiful. Um, but uh, yeah, I played trombone for like six or seven years as a high school student. Um, That's then it, amazing. <laughs> yeah, I abandoned it because I was too cool and then I kind of, one part that's great about being an adult is you realize uh, you, know, you don't have to try to be cool anymore and you just get to love all the things that you love and do them. So I play trombone again now. <laughs> yes, um, I, I, I'd love to see that on stage. I think it's interesting to me because when you talk about the instruments that you've kind of come up on and then you see that um, the bulk of the EP is piano driven songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am, um, well, I grew up playing piano, like I took classical piano lessons when I was four and then took classical voice lessons. So I was kind of like, I thought I'd maybe I'd do opera because it was so like emotive and sensual and intense and also kind of acceptable within a religious framework. Um, so I, I, I played piano for a long time. And then when I started writing songs, I kind of would be like playing a classical piece. And there would, I wouldn't want to play all the like, abrasive, you know, like the songs are some like sad and I like things to be beautiful. So I would just play the, the one part over and over and over again and get in trouble. But then I would write songs. That's how I started writing songs. So I was like, oh, this one, like, you know, like, can, I don't know, like, a, I don't, can't think of a good example. Anyway, some <laughs> song and then just playing the part over and over again and then writing something beautiful to it to make it my own song. Um, well, um, three of the songs that you played in the session are going to be on the EP along with uh, another song. Um, Homesick. Homesick, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But that last song, that's a new song. Yeah, I am. Um, I think we all went through like you know some form of existential crises, if we were being honest with ourselves over the last year. Hopefully, you know, because you evolve. But um, I just I wrote a lot of new songs, and I was saying I've done a bunch of live, live streams lately, and then I just threw in a new thing, just because <laughs> school night's so great. You know, I thought people deserve a a sneak peek thing, I guess. 
Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so now you're based in LA. You're working on uh, a full length album. What's? Can you give us an update on that? Well, the next thing that I release after this on June 11th will be those four songs, and then we have some more music videos coming out. We released a few last month, so you can check all of those out um, on my channel if you know you you can. But people listening, so, um, <laughs> and, uh, yes. And then I I have this whiteboard here. I'll show you. That is um. It, this is. This is all the, these are the songs that are n coming next. So, oh my God. So there's just like, there's about 102. So That was too fast. You, know, you took that away way too fast. <laughs> I don't want, you know. There's, <laughs> okay, at a glance, so we I'm, can see there's a lot going on. Yeah, so there's a lot of new songs coming and, and at some point, uh, I don't want to give a date because I don't know, but at some point we'll be, um, I'll, there will be another EP coming soon and then I would love to make a big, fat, beautiful album with like an excessive number of songs and string sections and choirs and, you know, things. It too. sounds so. like you're very prolific. Are you writing on your own all of these songs or are you collaborating as well? Um, so far, all the songs are just my own songs, but I, I love writing with other people. And I, I sometimes cold call writers I love to, you know, kind of like stalk them until they write with me. Um, I have a friend in uh, in LA named Luke Sattel Singh. I think he's on this chat and he's a beautiful songwriter. And there's a few people like that who are kind of like, you know, you find your writing soulmates where they also like weird words or they use visual language or, um, but but yeah, for now I, I do a lot of writing on my own. And that's, that's I impressive. Read, I read a lot. So then sometimes when I'm reading things, if there's a phrase, I don't know, I was reading this Leonard Cohen poem and it was like, kiss me with your teeth, you know, so I like put that in a song. Like sometimes there's just moments where you're like, this is a, or Ferlin Getty is this poet I really Lawrence love. Lawrence Ferlin Getty, yeah. Yeah, I've been reading him a lot and sometimes just his phrasings, I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, so lots of writing. Happened. You're going to the good stuff. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. That's how you get good, I guess, I don't know. Werner Herzog says every artist should read like, I mean, you know, I know he's also crazy, but he, says every In a good way, songwriter though, should be oh yeah the best way i say that with full joy uh you know <laughs> should be reading like three books a week or something so <laughs> i don't have time for that but i try to keep reading so what are you reading right now um i have that book of real getty poems i have oh ocean wong oh what's it called oh no it's supporting my computer i can't show you um <laughs> I've ocean got books wong i can't mine, remember too. the it's a beautiful L.A. based sort of like uh, book um, that's very pretty. Oh, I just read my friend. This is her book, The Hungover Games. It's about realizing she's pregnant in L.A. and like not being the kind of person who thought she'd ever have a kid. It's like beautiful and made me cry and it's hilarious. And like she's British, so it's very dark humor and like it's rude and nice. funny and great. So. Fantastic. I didn't mean to plug that. It was just there. That's not <laughs> or anything else. Just, like, just happened to have. <laughs> but um, <laughs> well, I. I I thank you so much for bringing your session to us and especially for hanging out while we sorted our little late start and uh, oh, we yeah. got a little bit of a late start. But Yeah, I remember watching Willy Wonka and then like the there's a thing where like the chocolate bar like goes into the screen and like shows up some like teleportation. It's like this is it's crazy <laughs> that all these people around the world could watch this. If it takes half an hour longer, it's like it's still not yeah. so. Thank it's you not so like, much um, yeah. for thanks for having me and uh I hope everyone listening, if you feel like, if you liked anything about the set, then, you know, you can follow me and I'll show you when I put out some new music. And, yeah. Um, uh, if you guys have any further questions, pop them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, let's give her a big hand. <laughs> um, I'm going to have you say your name again. Alyssa Milke. Yeah, Alyssa Did Milke. I get it? Yeah. Milke. Milke. Damn it. Milke. Milke. Alyssa Milke. Thank you so much, Chris. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. The uh, EP is coming June 5th on Mom and Pop Records. It's called Finally. And uh, thank you so much. We'll see you down the road. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alyssa Milka.